Hello and welcome to our Love Art Unlearn channel. Um, this week we are drawing um, Sheffield Park Garden. So there are many views. The ones I've chosen um, is this particular one, this picture here. And I just want to focus on drawing out the stately home. I'm not going to be too fussy about it, but I do just want to go over a couple of those techniques. So, as you can see, I've sketched out some of my um, picture already. And... I've just drawn in the shapes of the house. So I'm going to draw this in a little bit heavier than I would normally so you can see it more clearly. Um, I've got this first part of our um, house in here, which, let's bring this photo over, is this part here. And I've just divided it into two sort of oblongs, if you like, either side. And then I'm just going to go in and divide each part up as we go. So with this line in, I'm going to put in the next part here, next to it, which has then got a triangle coming up. Now that triangle is going to be halfway of this, near enough, there, and that's got like a, a spire coming out of it. And then we've got this um, tall window, which has got just rounded off at the top there. In the middle, that looks like that finishes about there. And then we've got some little bits of detail in there. Now, if you wanted to, you could, um, you know, obviously draw this out in pencil first if you want to. Or you could go straight in with a pen and make it more of a pen and wash type picture. That would look good. I might even still do that with mine. So those details in there. And then we're going to come over and look at the second part of the house where it's sort of just sectioned off there. Um, now, the top of that comes across. We've got the top of our building here just going along. And at the very top of that, we've got a little bit of a, a castle scenario going on. So teeny tiny little squares there just going across um, and then they go like steps on the side here just a little bit of detail now the windows so let's put a central line in first and then just sort of divide that and divide that in half again and then that means that when we go to put our windows in, we've got something to um, draw up to, if you like. Draw those vertical lines in and then just draw lines in for tops of windows. You can always rub them out after it, especially if you put pen in. Um, and then we've got another window over here. And I've just drawn my tree there, so that just goes over that a little bit. And then we've got um, a chimney that's just coming up here. And we can just see the side of it. So that angle is just going to drop down a little bit there. And then we've got um, another triangle here, but that looks like that's the other side of the house. But we'll put it in quite lightly. And then coming over to the left hand side of the house. Um, let's have a, a look at that. I'm just going to move my paper over a bit. So again this is divided into sections um, in here so if I bring this photograph over so you can just see um, the sections are divided. We've got the two long ones here, bit of space, bigger area and so forth going down. So that's what I'm going to be looking at when I just sketch that side of my house in. Um, two longer pieces here and then again just next to it there and then slightly um, bigger area coming over and it's just dropped down a bit there but another line in and then we've got like this bigger sort of castle side there so this has got a thicker column going down either side there and it is taller as well so it's coming up quite tall there 
and then on top of those we've got like little castle turrets so we'll just put them in as squares for the time being as again you can always rub out these lines after there and then we've got some little windows so again I might just put some of these lines in which will help me place some of those windows got some really little windows in there and then underneath there's three so you can put in as much detail as you want you don't have to go overly detailed you can keep it quite simple um, I've got a little bit of the castle edging on there that then drops I've got the side of the house there and that castle edging let me move these up that castle edging carries on as long as you get the fundamentals in as I said you don't have to be too fussy with it um, and then coming across we've got another um, section that's just sectioned off there and again that's got another two, another sort of long columns next to that that's now stepping down it's not as high in there and again got those little castle bits at the top there and then it just sort of peters off behind the trees there so with this section here again if I want to put in um, some windows I'll just put some lines in first and then that means I can just go in and put those windows in got some longer ones and some slightly bigger ones at the bottom there now they have all got some detail around them so again it just depends whether you want to go in and put those in so with the rest of the drawing if I just sort of pan out now um, if I can let's just pan out there that's it so with the rest of the drawing um, I've just put in I've got a nice sort of um, light bright tree here and I've got some of the trees on the sides and I've got some people so I've just decided to um, put that in as well um, I quite like this tree so I thought I might make something of that really nice and bright colour will go in there and then we've got the sides of the tree here bigger one coming in some of those shrubs um, or bushes at the bottom there I've um, got some people and I've got some of my bigger trees just sort of coming in the side there and quite a big bushy one there and in the background so you can add in more and more if you want to and what you'll notice on this I've taken my composition up quite high so I want less sky and more water as I come down so let's take that right back so what you can see here now if I push this up is I've got my picture and my composition that I've got in there and I'm going to bring this down because I want to make it more um, well not more about the water but I just decided that I'd quite like to have a quite a lot of water in this picture so I've really put that um, stately home at the top there um, with this sort of the bit of the grass and I'm just going to have a bit of that water coming in here we've got a slight reflections in there just seeing where that goes you know here and there not too much um, and I'm going to leave it there and then the colors I'm I'm picking I'm going to use burnt sienna and ultramarine because when they're mixed together they make quite a nice gray um, so I'm going to use that possibly in the water in the in the sky make it a bit more bluey perhaps um, and then for my greens I'm going to use some of the greens in the palette already made so I've got a green gold and I've got a sap green um, and what I've done here is I've mixed them with red so I've tried a brick red up here and then I've used scarlet lake and I've just put a tiny bit of scarlet lake in and what that does is it dulls the green down so these are the ones that have got been mixed with scarlet lake with a hint of the ultramarine and that's made it quite dark so I'm not going to use uh, brick red I'm going to use scarlet lake Windsor orange and lemon yellow for those autumnal colors and then stick with the green gold, sap green, ultramarine and burnt sienna. Those are the colours that I'm going to use. So when I go in, 
um, I'm going to mix up um, an ultramarine with um, a little bit of burnt sienna just so it's um, not too bright a blue sky although I could change it into a, a brighter blue sky a nice autumnal um, sky but if I put a tiny bit of ultramarine uh, sorry a burnt sienna in with the ultramarine it will just dull that blue off a little bit so it's not too bright um, I'm going to go in with my number four brush and just sort of go back in the background here and put that blue in. Try to keep it quite loose. And actually, as I come down, I'm just wetting my brush off because I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that mix. Um, this is my castle here, so, or stately home, I should say. And just take that brush over, leaving sort of areas of white um, in there. Ordinarily, if I was painting um, around a building like this, I would turn my picture upside down. Um, but, you know, we're doing a demonstration, so we'll keep it the right way up so we're not swishing things around. So I'm just taking a bit of water there, just next to that edge. And I have already decided in this particular uh, picture that, that at some point I am going to bring in a bit of gouache as well. Probably the gold gouache because I do fancy having a little bit of glitter and gold in those autumnal colours. So I've just gone in here and just added a little bit more of the um, ultramarine. And as you can see, I'm not covering it completely. I'm just leaving some areas white um, you don't have to it's just something that I like to do um, and then I'll go in and put some water in and then last of all while that water is drying um, I'm going to put in the trees and that's going to be a little bit of pointillism I've decided I'm going to use a little bit of pointillism for that that's going to be our focus this week anyway um, mainly because I want to sort of show using uh, wet in wet down at the bottom there and then pointillism for the trees which will give it um, a different texture and what you'll notice about the ultramarine is that because it's a granulating colour um, it breaks up the colour breaks up and I do quite like that it's not everyone's cup of tea but um, I like it so that's it for the sky now in with these colours here so obviously I've not put in my green jet, so you could go in and do the pointillism first if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to go in and put some yellow, lemon yellow, in with my um, sap green. And just put a little bit of colour in there. And it just adding the lemon yellow to it obviously just makes it more of a, a lemony green. And I'm just going to take that through there. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go in with a bit of lemon yellow proper um, and just mix that in. I'm going to go over my people there and I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to go over my bushy bits there um, and when it's dry, I can go back on top with my pointillism afterwards. Now, you don't need to use uh, pointillism in this particular exercise if you don't want to. You'll see what I'll, I'm doing with it a bit later. You could just keep it as washes if you want to. But I'm going to flush that through there and I'll use the pointillism um, in the trees. Now, I'm just going to put a little bit of colour into my stately home. So I'm going to use the burnt sienna um, and mix it, a tiny bit of it in with the ultramarine. So again... If you use burnt sienna, which is a lovely bright orangey colour, but you add a little bit of ultramarine to it, it will just dull it down and take that um, brightness away. I'm just going to test that up there because I think I want that a little bit lighter. I want a slightly lighter wash. And I'm going to take that through the whole of my home. I'm 
And I might actually switch down to a smaller brush now. I'm going to use my number two. Um, swish it around to a nice point and just put in the tone and then what I'll do later is come back into it and put in darker areas you know where the um, the sun is and how that affects it I'm just going to add a little bit more um, burnt sienna in there brighten that up a little bit come across in there And take that all the way over you can leave some light areas if you want to if you want to leave some white um, you might choose to and there might leave that white in there and then come back and put um, a little bit of darker color in there now this side is darker because the Sun is coming from our left and it's making this side of the building a lot lighter it's darker this side but I'm going to put the tone in and then when it's all dry I'll go back in and I will put in um, a, a tone on top of that just to make it darker so I'm just going to go a little bit through that tree and then across add a little bit more water to it there so those those particular colours in and now I'm going to go in and put in um, a bit of the water. So I will go back in with my um, bigger brush, my number four, and I'm going to wet the surface first. Around here. And I know my picture, the colours look quite grey, but I'm going to add a little bit more brightness in it because when I do my trees I'm going to make them quite bright I'm not going to make them as as uh, dull as they are on the left hand side of this photo I'm going to brighten them up so I'm going to have greens to the left uh, with a little flash of the autumnal colour and on the right it's going to be more autumnal colour so I'm just going to try and reflect that in the water we don't want to be too clever with it because it could end up in a bit of a mess but let's get that water on first. And again, a bit like our sky, I don't always completely cover um, it with water. I leave some white areas here and there because I just quite like it. Um, gives it a little bit of zing, I feel. Right now, whilst that's sinking into the paper, um, I'm going to mix up my colours. So I'm going to keep to the... Um, ultramarine and the burnt sienna for the very top there and then I'll bring in some of my um, sap green to the left in the water and then I'm going to bring in a little bit of the autumnal colours this or burnt sienna colours to the right so let's mix up this ultramarine I'm having ultramarine as it is because that's quite bright and then I'm going to add the burnt sienna to it to dull it off a little bit so we'll just come across here and not forgetting, because I have put water on here first, although this looks quite bright, the blue, it will um, lighten up because I've got water on there. I've applied the colour with water, so it will lighten up. And you can see how it's spreading there. Lovely. Right, let's go in with a bit of the um, burnt sienna added to it, which will just sort of dull it down a little bit. Um, and we'll come over here on this side. I'm going to leave little bits of area of white as well just because I like to now as I come down here I'm going to start adding a bit of my um, sap green to my blue so I'm going to add it in with my blue mix so it's not too bright a sap green and just bring that down on the left there and I might actually take it up a little bit higher just under this blue here And as I come down, I'm going to add a little bit more of that um, ultramarine. Quite light at the moment. It's dark in the picture, but um, I'm going to keep it quite light and washy as it comes down. Then as we come across, I'm going to bring in a little bit more of that burnt sienna. Just in the middle here. Now these lines... Um, 
for the building. We'll, we'll do those a bit later as it dries off. I'm going to bring in a little bit of that lemon actually as well, just to sort of flash that through a little bit to sort of reflect what's going on up above. And then add some more of my blue towards the bottom there. And then on my right here, I'll start off with a bit of my, my blue, but I'm going to bring in some of that, more of that burnt sienna. And then maybe a bit of orange. Um, just to reflect the, the colours of the trees I'm going to put there. So this is a bit of the burnt sienna coming in here. And I want that to be a bit brighter, so I'm going to use it on its own. And again, although it is bright, not forgetting that these colours um, will dull down because I've got water in here. So I'm just going to add a bit of that burnt sienna there to the ultramarine. And bring that down. And just come, come, come across there. That's picked up a little bit more of the blue. And I'm just going to add a little bit more water down here. And just let that fade out. Um, and actually, I might just put, because in this tree here, I'm going to make that quite bright. So I'm just going to bring in a tiny bit of my Scarlet Lake need to be careful with that because Scarlet Lake is a very powerful colour. So I've just mixed it in a little bit with my Burnt Sienna. And although it's not in the lake, I'm just going to try and show them a little bit of where that might reflect in there. So that can just sort of dry off a little bit as well. And I might just add a little bit of the red, flush that through here and there, just in the tree. A little bit down there. And then we'll let that dry off a little bit. And as that's drying off, we're going to go in and put some of these um, lines in of the stately home um, in with our burnt sienna. So let's just do a little check to see. I'm going to use a smaller brush. I'm going to go in with my number two. A little bit of burnt sienna, not on its own because it is quite bright. I'm going to mix it a little bit with the, the blue. Um, I think that's going to be quite wet to be honest, but we'll just touch and see. Yeah, it's too wet at the moment, so there's no point putting that in because it will just splatter everywhere. The idea is that as that dries off, not completely dry, but as it dries off, we'll go back in and put some of these um, lines in. Now, I have put my pencil lines in heavier than I would normally, as I said, um, just for visibility for the demo. Normally, I'd do it a little bit lighter. So whilst that's drying off, um, I will finish this part of the demonstration. And when we come back, I'm going to do some pointillism around in the trees. Um, and I'm going to go back in and put in some of the detail and the darker tones into the stately home. And put these lines in um, in our painting there. So I'll see you in part two.